And now to the latest on the pandemic and the Omicron variant. Today, both the CDC and FDA cleared the way for some teenagers to get booster shots. Feds authorized 16 and 17 year olds to get the Pfizer booster specifically. So that means another round of shots could be going into millions of arms. That's right. Joining us now to talk mm -hmm. about that and the latest on Omicron, Dr. Michael Daniel with Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel, for joining us again. Thanks for having me again. Good to see you. Doctor, first, your reaction to today's decision on boosters for mm -hmm. millions of teenagers. Yeah, I think it's interesting that, you know, in previous times when we've had to approve boosters, it's gone through the process where the FDA has their independent um, committee look at this and the FDA adopts it. Then it goes to the CDC, the CD com CDC committee looks at it, the CDC director signed off. But what we had within one day was both the FDA itself and then the CDC director, Dr. Walensky, signing off on this. And I think what that signifies to me is that we're seeing the start of a transformation towards perhaps going away from referring to these as boosters and recognizing that the mRNA vaccine at least should be a three dose regimen. Yearly, are we talking about something that we have to do yearly, doctor? I think it's too early to say about mm -hmm. annually, but I think right now that's where we're at. All right, well, some, some doctors are saying it's pretty early, but uh, many believe uh, Omicron will soon overtake Delta as the dominant variant. One doctor even said that might not be a bad thing if Omicron is less severe. Your thoughts on that? So, I mean, right now we're facing in this country a full-on Delta surge. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And thankfully, we have much more genetic sequencing than we did last year. We're able to quickly identify the Omicron variant when it mm -hmm. comes up, especially in L.A., and then isolate and test those known exposures, which for the most part have been have been negative, which is great, which shows the vaccines are doing their job at reducing their transmission. But I think it's far too early to assume that Omicron is um, less deadly, less virulent than Delta and other strains. I mean, certainly in um, the data we have from the Guateng province in South Africa, it shows that people that are going to the hospital are staying for an average of three days versus eight days with Delta. They're less likely to require oxygen or ventilators or ICU level of care. But the on the flip side of that, the cases of Omicron are doubling every one to two days. And for Delta, they would double every one to five days. So even if it proves to be less virulent, you still have a very highly transmissible variant on our hands. And if there's an explosion of cases, even if it's a small percentage of a large number of cases, that's still a big number of cases that could overwhelm our hospitals. Yeah. And we saw that with Delta. I mean, ultimately it was proven that Delta did not cause more severe illness than the previous variants, but just from the sheer number of cases because it was so contagious led to that surge of Delta that we had over the, over the summer. Well, Dr. Daniel, from what we've seen so far and from what we know, what are your biggest concerns about Omicron? So initially, you know, we're, we have a, a great sharing globally of data from scientists um, immediately when they get results in their labs. Particularly, we owe so much of, so much gratitude to, to the data and the, um, the labs and the scientists coming out of South Africa. And so this week we had some data that showed that in plasma tests, looking at blood samples of people that were vaccinated and people that had COVID and also were subsequently vaccinated, that there was a partial reduction in the neutralizing activity of the Pfizer vaccine against the Omicron variant. So that sounds concerning, but we have to remember that these were lab studies and I think we're all looking forward to seeing how well the vaccine is gonna do in a real world population because our immune systems are more than just the neutralizing antibodies. And just this afternoon, I got some data that the um, the T cell response, which is the other part of the immune system, is still able to successfully recognize the Omicron spike variant, latch onto it and neutralize it. And so I think that just show, that just gives more impetus to the fact that vaccines will work against this and that even if Omicron is able to partially reduce the effectiveness of the antibodies, our immune system is still wonderfully complex and we still have these amazing T cells that are able to reduce the incidence mm -hmm. of severe disease and keep people out of the hospital. That's some good news, right? Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel, for all that information. We really appreciate your insight this afternoon. Thank you.